There is no sound. Why is there no sound? Why is there no sound, David? Can you hear me now? Can you hear him now? We do this. This is what we do. This is our thing. They should have been hitting me up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Anyways, everybody, hello and welcome to another live hold on, show. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. My mic was. Uh, Can I talk? Doing something funny. Or no? You're gonna reintro. What I was saying was restart, reboot. Welcome to another live show, guys. We are. Uh, I'll just say what I was saying again because you couldn't hear me. I don't know why my mic was turned off there. That's weird. But anyway, hopefully you can hear me now. I think my sound is coming through fine. Yeah, they can. Okay, good. Um, We're excited to be with you today. We're excited to talk about some deeper topics into the Edenic state of living and how we, through certain principles and realization of those principles, are going to return to a state of heaven on earth. But the only way it happens is through us of moving the intellectual knowledge of uh, who we really are into practice and realization so um yeah i'm here as i said before with my beautiful bride to be and she's looking across at me i get this wonderful visual mm. but um yeah let us know where you guys are from let us know where you're coming from in the live chat and um, we're excited to dive into about an hour's show which i'll keep it to about an hour today and with a powerful meditation at the end so stick around for that yeah, guys, so this is um, the work that we are trying to just bring into our everyday lives, and we're trying really hard, even though it's difficult, like we're still in this human life, we're showing up here, and we're trying to talk about these wisdoms and these truths that we're just you know, we've stumbled upon these teachings and we feel that they're really important. They're not well known. And intellectually, we are learning them ourselves, and we're trying to realize them in our own consciousness and become more in alignment with walking those truths and walking this path. But it is still very, very difficult. It was... It's been just a an up and down week. I had a lot of company come stay with us lately. We had my little brother come and stay and uh, he's 20. So he's really young. He grew up very Christian, very religious. So he's really got his own beliefs and he questions a lot of our beliefs. Uh, my favorite was when he called us Luciferian. I thought that was really, really great. <laughs> so, um, yeah, these things can be incredibly triggering because we have very strong beliefs. Other people have very strong beliefs. We always just recommend um, anything that we're saying. If it doesn't resonate, um, you know, take what does, leave what doesn't. This is always an open discussion. That's why we started doing these lives. And um, we do really respect where everybody's at. We're all very different. We all have different truth in our consciousness, in our life. Things can be incredibly triggering. Um, we're, I'm still very much in my humanness. I can only speak for myself. You know, I'm getting very triggered by my brother and his behavior and the way he communicates and, uh, you know, holds himself. If you're watching this chat, we love you. We love you. <laughs> I know he's not watching this. And um, also, you know, just even calling the phone company today, like that was incredibly triggering. So we have these relationships that we have to navigate in our humanness, but the truth of the matter is that we really are all one and like we're one soul we're one like life one love it's all oneness but the appearance is that we are all very separate and apart from one another and we're trying to dive into the teachings deeper that we are not only one with god 
we are one with everybody and one with self and that's what we're going to be diving more into tonight but also with the recognition that this is no easy walk like this is a a very challenging and difficult path it really is yeah definitely and we're all indoctrinated to some degree to something that brings us into the belief of two powers which as we've spoken about before is the only source of discord in the world And that's great when we know that intellectually, but how do we actually move back towards the one power, the one mind principle? And there are steps to do it. The mystics have left us breadcrumbs and we're certainly hot on that path. Um, Yes, Kelly and I are at different points of that evolution, but that's fine as you all are watching this. So we'll communicate at different levels from where we're at um, in terms of our understanding and realization of things. And we'll just uh, talk back and forth as we do normally here. But yeah, let's get straight into today's show. It's really about the one power and moving again from the intellectual state into the realization of this. Let's maybe bring this up. Let's see now. As you know, we're going to try to keep these shows to one hour. We're going to even be doing another show on Thursday, but we're going to talk more about that at the end. Yeah. So as per usual... These are the recommended reading books for the series that we're on uh, right now, The Infinite Way Teachings from Joel Goldsmith, moving from left to right. Real quick, all the links are in the description, guys. Uh, The Infinite Way, number two, The Art of Meditation, number three, The Art of Spiritual Healing, number four, Living the Infinite Way, number five, Practicing the Presence, and number six, which is where we draw... A few things from today, something from my side, Kelly's coming from another book. Um, the Thunder of Silence at number six. These are the first six books that we recommend reading in this order. And if you want to pick up a copy, they're all available on Amazon. And we've got the links in the description of today's video. Highly recommended, guys. Highly, highly recommended. So these books are where our teachings are coming from, where these discussions are coming from, and this is really the path that David and I are on now. And, you know, we are putting most of our energy and effort into these teachings. However, that's not to say that we're not open. Um, There's many other books, many other teachings, many other sources, literatures, people, perceptions, truths, you name it that have made us exactly who we are today. And we draw on all of that. Um, So this is not the end all be all. This is not the only source uh, where you can get truth. So that's not what we're saying. Um, We just want to say that once we found these teachings, it, it was kind of like everything just wanted to fall away. And this is what we wanted to focus on. And this this really resonates as truth in our consciousness, as difficult as some of these concepts are to grasp and really move through our humanness into these realizations. Um, we both just understand the importance of it. And uh, that's what we're going with. Yeah, for sure. And the goal really for, certainly for me, is to build a circle of Christhood around the world. And that essentially is those small few who will go on and take teachings like this on to moving through humanhood. And uh, that's really all that the earth needs to move into as a population, a very high state of being. And again, the mystics have taught this for a long, long time. And that is the return to the Edenic state. Because the reality is very, very few people, less than 100 people, probably less than 20 people will pick up these teachings and actually go on and um, implement them into their life. And that's totally fine. We're, we're fine with that. I'm at peace with that. But yeah, once we started to, just coming from my own experience, once I started to exercise some of the truths that we're going to today and more in coming shows, uh, some profound things began to happen above and beyond that which had already happened, which was you know, that's saying something. And they continue to do that. So, yeah, kicking off the first topic of tonight, which is dominion. And we will draw, as we normally do, from a few places. Christian Bible scripture is a great place to draw from when you really know how to interpret it. When you interpret it from a mystic's standpoint, a standpoint of illumination 
versus the religious standpoint, you start to be able to extract some quite incredible truths from these scriptures. And Joel is certainly, having spent some time in Christianity in a number of years, um, Joel is certainly the only person having followed pastors on the ground, pastors online, many, many of them, dozens and dozens and dozens, Joel is the only one who has really drawn truth that resonates with me from Christian Bible scripture. Um, now that you don't have to follow that to uh, to really um, move into these states of illumination, but we are certainly going to come from that that place today. So yeah, the the fullness, the uh, the dominion on the earth, and the fullness fullness thereof is essentially meaning that God and all the divine laws that are in place before mankind was ever born, before any beings were on the earth, is and belongs to God. Everything in the earth belongs to God. But the thing is with that is, as Yeshua talks about, is that we have uh, full access to that dominion. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to move through the, the limiting elements of humanhood which keep us bound to the material world, a.k.a. the beginning of duality aka the garden of eden and we talked about that in earlier shows um so yeah the the dominion side of things just to remember intellectually that we we have everything that as the bible would say the father has everything that the creator has we have access to now if you want to get on this path you're going to have to be completely open to letting go of all your human things and that can be quite a scary thought. We've talked about that before. And we've used little exercises before to sort of shake ourselves a bit looser from our identification with the material body, the material concept of who we are. And uh, we're not going to do that tonight, but go back and watch earlier shows. There's a great meditation about moving out of body that we did. have done a couple of times, actually. Um, and it stems from the question of where are you? You know, where actually are you in your awareness? Because the key is to move into what Joel calls um, silent awareness. And only in silent awareness can we start to move out of the way and allow the divine energies to flow through us. I have a copy of the Katha Bible. Go on, so yeah. it's not that we actually have to like get rid of all of our things and that we can't enjoy human things. It's just that we're not going to be so attached to them. It's not going to be our first priority. When we make uh, God and our spirituality a priority and we start just living by grace, all of those things become added things and they become added unto us unto our experience so it's not so much about us having to worry about going out and attaining those things again we've talked about this god knows what we need before we know what we need so just having the faith and trusting that those things will be made available to us and um god wants to give us the all the things like to take pleasure in in that and to enjoy our experience here it's not that you know we can't have those things he he was saying he was going to pre prepare mansions for us you know <laughs> so it's not that uh we can't enjoy those things and we still will enjoy things and will enjoy our humanness but it doesn't become our sole focus we can kind of leave that in in the background and you know just focus on our relationship with self with god going within and uh starting to walk that spiritual walk and this is kind of how we take back our dominion and um i thought it was really interesting i read something we didn't really talk about it um before we came on but i thought this was kind of cool so from the book I'm reading, Joel says um, that we give evidence of our love for God in our love for our neighbor. There is no God hanging up in space, not in the space of this room or above the room, and not in the space above the ground or the space above the sky. 
the only God there is, is our incarnated in our soul and in the soul of every individual. So I just feel like that kind of puts things into perspective. Um, we're kind of dealing with like two, there's really only two things here in this like physical human world that we're dealing with. There's either form and then there's consciousness. So like we have this dominion that you speak of. Mm -hmm. You seem a little distracted. No, carry on. Let me see. I'm just seeing. Yeah, okay. Carry on. Carry on. Are we streaming to all the channels? I think so, yeah. Okay. It says there's like one person watching, which is not true at all because we've got like 10 people in the chat. Well, I know people are like talking in the chat and then it says like no one's here. So it's that's, really. That's, it, it, that's not true. That's not accurate. Yeah. Well, we've been having some issues with Restream. Hi, Broska. <laughs> Anyways, I'm trying to have a discussion here with David and he's like picked up his phone and he's looking at something else. I'm just curious to see what's going on. And I just thought that this was. <laughs> I lurk, but I'm listening. You guys are so great. We just love you for just joining in and listening to these concepts because, again, sometimes they're just, they even go over my head and trying to like get this footing and get this understanding. And we all have so many questions when it comes to this spiritual realm because it's this invisible realm that w we are all just trying to like intellectually understand. And yet we're also trying to have these, these realizations. So just coming back to the concept I was just talking about, I feel like there's form and there's consciousness. And that's pretty much like when you talk about dominion, anything that it, everything is consciousness, like it's all made up of consciousness. But as you know, there's different le levels of consciousness. So there's the you know, one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional consciousness. So we know like the one dimensional and two dimensional consciousness is really the form. It's like the, that is like what we have dominion over mm -hmm. as being humans, where our consciousness is of third dimensional consciousness or higher, where we have that awareness of self mm -hmm. and we have dominion over the lower forms of consciousness, which are basically anything of form, anything of nature. So that includes like our bodies. We have dominion over our bodies. Our bodies just form. It's not us, like us, who we truly are, mm -hmm. is our consciousness. And the way that the book said it is the only God there is, is our, incarnated in our soul and the soul of every individual. Mm -hmm. So we don't have dominion over each other. I don't have dominion over you. You don't have dominion over me. Because the only way I can honor God is by honoring you and recognizing that you too are the soul of God. So I just thought that that was a super interesting concept when we talk about dominion. I just wanted to clarify like what we have dominion over and... Um, we often refer to that as the kingdom of God. So anything that is in the kingdom of God is anything of form, anything of nature, um, and even anything like in the ethers, like etheric. That is, is really where form manifests. And it's through our consciousness, putting it out in the ethers, that things are able to manifest. Yeah. So we're just trying to like take back our dominion because we very, very much give it away in our humanness. And we're going to talk about the way that we do that. Yeah, it's very interesting. Like, if you ask me to ask the question, who, who should be applying these teachings in their lives? Anyone who's experiencing uh, financial problems, anyone who's experiencing relationship problems, anyone who's experiencing health problems, anyone who's experiencing... Um, work problems, anyone who's experiencing um, problems in their life should be tuning in tonight to to follow these teachings because uh, they are 
this way of moving into the divine union is the only way out of that. If you are not doing that, you're going to go up and down on the roller coaster ride of human and for your whole life, and that's just the way that it'll be. So it's just interesting. It's like this is just one person watching this. I don't even know that's, if that's the case or not. Um, what's going on with that? But well, anyway, that's not the so, case because you can see all the people in the chat that are commenting. So I think we just need to yeah. No, I'm just curious. Let that go if and you, not um, let that distract. If you are in the live chat right now. If you can just send us a quick message in the live chat, let us know you are there because our readout here says there's virtually no one watching, which is, uh, we normally have at least a few. So can you let us know, yeah, that you are there? One, two, three. Maybe there is only seven people watching. My goodness, we have like so many, such a large audience. It's just weird that there's so few people, it says, that are watching. Okay. So what we're being There's told here, what we're being told time. here is is incorrect, is a lie. Okay, that's so strange. I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe it's interference. Who knows? Thanks, everybody. We appreciate your comments. We know you're here. We just need to not be distracted, like by the numbers. Again, it's a very human thing, right? No, I'm not. I'm not being distracted. I'm just curious because we're monitoring things, and this is a. A session where we're sharing some of these things and um, I'm just curious to see how many people are watching but anyway so okay there's way more than that watching that's that's so weird either way um, yeah if you are experiencing any form Thanks, of lack or, or limitation in your life these teachings are going to moving from the intellectual realm to realizing the things we're going to share with you that we're doing as well are going to benefit you massively in your life even if you don't go to full christ realization um all my subscriptions were lost all right guys you can stop saying i'm here thank you again i do this way more people than we're being told <laughs> are watching this which is great hi lisa good to see you um yeah and so we don't really know what's going to happen in the future it seems that there is uh the lack and limitation broadcast is getting louder and louder it seems to be still affecting a lot of people. And in my experience now, especially with following the path that we're on, I don't experience even an ounce of it. Like we just continue to be abundantly blessed. It's like it doesn't exist more and more and more and more. And um, if you're interested in moving into those states, if you're not there already, then this is absolutely the show for you. So I wanted to just emphasize that because... Sometimes you can log on if you don't know what we're doing here with these shows and go, what's this all about? And it's really about moving into that Edenic way of being. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of people that do know the way that we live our life and we have a very, very blessed and free way of living and being. I think we probably say a hundred times a day, like how grateful we are for the lifestyle and the freedom that we get to experience in this life. And, um, you know, these teachings have become a big part of how and why we get to experience that. I'm not saying things don't happen to us or in our lives that we have to like go through and grow through because it, it absolutely does. But um, it's, you know, it's always the way that you bounce back and it's always the mindset that you have. And some of these teachings for us have really enabled us to just have a lot of faith and knowing and understanding of the inner workings. And uh, yeah, we've we've been, been very blessed. So that's one of the main reasons like we want to come on and share this so that other people can also experience the same quality of life that we get to experience and again I'm so excited for Thursday's show because we are we are sure dropping a bomb and we're going to be starting to help out our spiritual community a lot more and we're going to do a lot more giving and we're going to do a lot more giving back and it's just something that um you know we've wanted to do and we've talked about for a really long time and now we're finally getting the um yeah opportunity to do that and i'm just so excited i can't even contain myself but please yeah. tune in on thursday because we should around. have some really exciting stuff to talk about i'm getting yeah. i'm getting emotional just thinking about it so yeah stick around to the end of the show guys we've got a very exciting announcement after the meditation let's crack on um thank you all for sharing 
that you're present and what have you. Yeah, it is the case that YouTube is saying this is like two or three people watching and there's more like 60 or 70, maybe even more than that. So anyway, it doesn't matter. I was just curious because I'm always monitoring things, making sure the feed's coming through straight, making, th making sure the audio's coming through, et cetera, et cetera, to maximize your viewing experience. So how and what your ascension path will look like is determined on a few things. It's a very personal journey. The ascension, yes, we're going through as a collective, but the ascension journey is very, very personal. And it's very, very likely, like fingerprints, that your ascension journey may have similarities to other people's, but it's going to be very different to you. And there's a number of reasons for that. You probably know most of those reasons. But it's worth mentioning again that you come into this life with really only one um, one crossover from all your other lifetimes, and that is how spiritually awake you were when you transitioned from the physical of your last body. You do carry and bring that through 99% of the time. It's very rare for a soul to have achieved a lot of um, things in human bodies i.e. awakened spiritually a lot in physical bodies and, and agree to come back into a physical body being completely asleep. Now, it, it almost certainly does happen. It's just extremely rare. And especially now at this time of the ascension of the planet and of the collective um, that you would not have, you've already come in hugely awake and having done a lot of spiritual work now not to say you haven't got more stuff to do in this lifetime we all we all do of course but that's the starting line that's where we come in and those who are asleep in this lifetime just haven't figured out the spiritual stuff yet but they will and there is no question that they will now we get the wonderful task of holding the light and helping each other remember what the meaning of life really is as we try and discover it for ourselves and as we make our way on our own ascension path so that it's really important to remember that as we look at um, other people in our family if we look at the uh, families that we choose to come in to we all choose our families and our parents etc and our relationships and our lessons to a large large degree almost entirely before we incarnate into a human physical body and it's just important to remember. There's a, a wonderful message I posted tonight from Ten Han of the uh, Pleiadian uh, Collective. And it was about, it started off, it was about division. And uh, it came through earlier today. And it started off saying, as we always like to give you practical exercises of how to look through the material appearances. And if you can imagine a raindrop and imagine that there is a green dye or even a blue dye that's injected into the raindrop, but it only colors the outside of it. The rest of the raindrop is kept completely intact. And if you look around, all the other raindrops falling is, do you see that raindrop as different? You know, do you see it as a blue raindrop when ultimately at the core of it in the actual makeup of the raindrop is exactly the same as all the other raindrops? And I love that um, sort of visual because when we go out there into the world or when we live our lives, we're always looking to perceive and understand things through the material streams of information, through our eyes, our nose, our ears. And we're interpreting things that way, specifically other people. So the exercise that, that Ten Hag was giving is to look at everyone else as raindrops. And I love that. Those of you who have been, been part of other shows, we've done... Um, if I think it was last week we did a, or even the last Global Mass Meditation, I can't remember, but it was about becoming part of the ocean as, as Rumi has wonderfully uh, voiced. Yeah, go on. Um, <laughs> this is just, again, from the chapter that I was reading, and it's just a, a little sentence here. There is only one reason that dishonesty in human relationships continue. Only one reason being humans do not knowingly or willingly expose their conduct to the light of God. They are clever enough to stay away from God. 
For a time, they may succeed in their wickedness, but when they bring themselves close to God, they find that they cannot deviate from spiritual integrity. So, you know, that's so much of what we talk about is this will, like free will, free will choice. And those of us that are on this path of you know, walking the spiritual path and knowing God and getting closer to God, it's almost like we know better and we can see through the appearance to the truth that everybody is a child of God and that, you know, we love them and we see through this identity and it's only because they haven't quite figured out the secret that they are this child of God, and they keep their life completely separate and apart from God, that they're able to walk that path and continue to do things that appear to be evil and uh, misaligned. And we, it's very challenging because, again, we see this appearance. We see what they're doing. We see that it's no good. And our immediate reaction is to just want to judge and want to respond to that and want to say, no, that's not me. I'm not like that. I'm separate from that. So um, yeah, maybe don't zoom in on me because it just wants to glitch out, but it seems like it's okay when I'm, it seems like it's moving from like the the big uh, image that you have. And then when you zoom in Right away, it uh, takes a minute to glitch out. But anyways, what I was saying is that this this free will choice enables us to decide what path we want to walk. But as soon as we choose, you know, a spiritual path, everybody that started walking a spiritual path, they can't go back from there. There's no going back. Like once you see the light, once you see the truth, It's like you're on the path and like, yes, you may deviate from it and get distracted a little bit and go over here for a minute. But ultimately, like there's this pulling towards the light. That's why we call the podcast Towards the Light. There's this pulling towards spirit. There's this pulling towards God. And um, it is so important for us to just be able to understand the truth know the truth, and uh, see the truth for those who might not be able to see it yet. But as we, with our consciousness, are able to see through um, the facade and see beyond appearances and see like the truth in others, then our consciousness starts contributing to their story and their identity. And when we hold space for them, that's when they catch glimpses of themselves, that they are part of that same source and that they are love. And it's really all about, you know, holding space for one another. And I think that that's one of our our main jobs yeah, coming for sure. here. And yeah. Yep. yeah, just spreading that knowledge, wisdom, awareness, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I wanted to just revisit um, something for a second, and it was really about um, the silent awareness. I want to go back to it because it's so, so important, and I love that terminology. Now, the silent awareness really is that the zero-point space that we allow the Creator to move through us or through or into us from, and you experience that, many of you have, with... Um, activities that you do. For example, uh, if you're playing sport or if you're a creative, you're creating something, or even if you're just in the moment of something, that's really what in the moment is, you've moved out the way and you're tuning into a divine flow. Of course, you'll hear it called the flow state. Now, that is the silent awareness that Joel talks about. And it's only in this silent awareness can we build and understand what the creator is. Now, with the mental mind, it can't be done. And it's not designed for that. The mind is, is designed to be an awareness for the divine to flow through us. But we have, uh, over the, the eons, been distracted away from our true identity. So we've been distracted away from realizing who we really are, what access we have 
uh, to infinity, essentially. But um, yeah, I wanted to just say that because that silent awareness is is really encouraged by the mystics that we should be using more of. And of course, those of you who've got very active minds, um, host, we see you. Oh, that's you. <laughs> You're one of the hosts. Wow. I wish you say Kelly. Um, those of you who've got very active minds, that can be very difficult to do. We will be doing further shows on contemplative meditation and how to sort of get into that zero point space um, because that is really where we want to be. Um, so moving on. You know, so this really brings us to the tree of life analogy. So, you know, there is one tree, there is one life, and the life of the tree is the life of every branch on the tree. There doesn't need to be a union because there are not two. There is just one. There can be dozens and dozens of branches, but there is only one life, one intelligence, one source of supply, and therefore, no single branch of the tree can ever be in conflict with any other branch. And as we understand this about the tree, soon we shall be able to understand that there really is a tree of life and a central source, you know, beating through all of life and that we are all parts of that life. And as much as we appear to be separate branches on the tree, we are all bound together by this invisible tie, which is life itself, the central theme of being. Life is the tree of which we are all branches, and we all derive our life, intelligence, love, care, and protection from the same source. So I just think that that's really the whole gist of it. As much as we are one with source, one with God, one with the tree of life. We're all just branches all on that same tree. We're all connected. We are all one. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, amazing. Um, I totally agree. Yeah, so the, uh, sorry if the video is glitching out, guys. Uh, that seems to be the theme of today. But anyway, you can hear us fun, I'm sure. <laughs> It's important to remember that the source of all discord in your life has been caused by carnal mind, the mental mind, essentially. And the only way to streamline that is, again, returning to the one power principle. So if anyone, if anything in your life right now is seemingly bringing you discord, there's only one reason for that. And you have you have surrendered your dominion to it. Now, we've talked about it on the terminology in, in different shows, which is that you've got a, a belief in two powers. There's a belief in a power apart from God. But essentially, the surrendering of your dominion is what humanity has done for so long. And it is the cause of all the world's ills because the dominion that you have ultimately is the true union with God. And we're returning to this now. And we've got a really powerful meditation coming up in a very short while here to just help us move above carnal mind um, but it's important i think to remember this and i really wanted to sort of stamp down on it today is that there's no one or anything there's no thing doing anything to you nothing and no one can do anything to you no one can upset you no one can betray you no one can steal from you no one can do any of these things because you have full dominion when you realize who you are and you step into that power of union, true union with your real self, there is nothing that can be taken from you. So it's really important to remember this because we do move into that space of victimhood when it comes to all kinds of things, whether it's the solar flash, whether it's the government doing something, whether it's our partner bringing something to us, whatever it is, you know, where are you surrendering your dominion to is a really, really important question. And if you've been going through any discord in your life in any way, where have you surrendered your dominion to? When you find the answer to that question, you'll find the root of your power. Yeah, yeah that's so funny because pretty much what you're saying and uh, also share 
She kind of just highlighted that in the comments as well. The problem is some of the branches of the tree think that they are better. So let's say that we cut one branch off the tree and uh, the branch has a bunch of fruit on it, a bunch of budding flowers on it, and now we remove the branch from the tree because the branch thinks that it's better. The branch is like, you know, what a glorious branch I am. Look how beautiful I am. Look how much luscious fruit I have on me, so on and so forth. And, um, you know, what happens in just a few days after that branch becomes cut from the tree? So now it's severed and this life force of the tree is no longer feeding the branch and when life no longer feeds it, then there's nothing left to do except to wither. And naturally, there will be no more flowers and there will be no more fruitage, uh, you know, to be proud of. So this is very similar to what happens when a person believes that like they are intelligent, they are good, they're strong, they're healthy and wealthy and all of these things. And they're just kind of wandering around as this separate branch. And eventually they do start to wither up inside. And, you know, it's natural for us to say, oh, that's natural. You're just getting old. You're just, you know, losing what you once had kind of a thing. But it's really not natural from a spiritual standpoint. And I think that that's what, what we're learning it's only natural because they've been feeding their ego. It's only natural because they believe that they of their own self are something. Yeah. And the truth is, you know, he, they, they were only something because they were one with that tree of life, one with source. And I think that that's really what's happened to us as humanity. We've all gone out and separated ourselves from source, from God. We all, you know, use our ego and to get things and to move further in life. And we've just become so separate to a point that, you know, there's all this like death and duality and evil and all of these things in our experience. And now it's up to us to find our way back to God, back to oneness, back to that that tree of life, back to source. Yeah, and the purpose of life is to realize that union with God. Like that for me is the purpose of life. And if you are believing that you can do things yourself and it's all about you, you can't accomplish anything spiritually, zero. Uh, but you can accomplish a lot of things in the material world and that's absolutely fine, nothing wrong with that. But if, you, if you're on the spiritual path and you want to rise in spirituality, the, um, the belief that you are doing anything will, will accomplish you nothing in spirituality. In fact, it will regress you. So there's a comment and it says negative energy must be cut off. So this is really um, in alignment with what you've got up here, the carnal mind and error. So what is the error? you know, that this negative energy is a power, that evil is a power. And, um, you know, how do we overcome that? And there's really only two ways that we can overcome this, you know, evil power, this negativity that is looming in in the planet and you know in other individuals and so on and so forth like how do we overcome this evil this negativity this darkness and there's only two ways so number one we must remember our truth and our true identity that we are children of god and we are one with god and secondly is to know the source of all error and that is what David has highlighted here as the carnal mind so any of the world's discords and inharmonies come to us as a form of mental malpractice so this is an imposed mental force 
from something outside of us and it's not anyone's doing, it's not anyone's fault, it's basically just that we have surrendered our dominion. We have allowed something outside of us to impose upon our free will and we accept it as a belief in our consciousness and therefore it manifests in our experience and it happens all the time you see it with propaganda you see it in the news and it's the same thing like there's going to be a pandemic there's going to be an epidemic it's like it's announced on the tv it's announced on the radio it can even be um you know a big storm is coming or this or that uh you know food prices whatever you name it there's something that is like a seed that gets planted in our consciousness and it is basically a mentally imposed suggestion in our minds and we actually are responsible for it because we didn't avoid it we didn't know the truth of our being and we didn't know how to prevent it we just allowed this mental imposition to come into our awareness and we were like oh you know, this is this is a thing now. And then we believe it and then it manifests in our experience. So it's the same with all disease. It's the same with all sin. It's the, just a, a mental force. And it's also this carnal mind. So it's this universal accepted belief. And again, we're all one. So it's it's challenging to like go against the grain and say like, no, that's not truth when really that's the appearance of truth. So I think that yeah. this is really, you know, the source of error is just us allowing these mental suggestions in our consciousness. And they've gotten really, really good at making those suggestions. And I mean, we do it ourselves every single time we share negative news and propaganda and our worries and our fears on social media. We're just propagating that yeah. into our experience. Yeah. Yeah, John, you ask a good question. Now, what is your solution? Make it plain. Well, the solution is very, very clear. And the solution is to um, move your mind out of the way and plug into the divine mind and let that live your life. Now, uh, that's the solution. How you go about doing that, there are levels to building that, and we're talking about the levels. And the levels are to realize intellectually the things we're talking about, and in other shows we'll, of course, go into other things as well, um, and to then move that intellectual, no intellectual knowledge into the realization, into the actualization of that knowledge. Now, it's not our solution. This is the solution of mystic saints and sages that have left uh, these breadcrumbs for us and left the, the truth for us in this age um, as torchbearers to become the light, to become the flame. So that's the solution. And Joel's teachings are not the only teachings to get there. They're certainly the purest form that I have found and the easiest to apply in the modern age that, I must say modern, uh, in, the, in the age that we're in today. And so um, the reason for these shows and these podcasts are to outline these things that we are learning and realizing ourselves and to share with you all. So um, is it simple? Yes. Is it easy to apply? It depends on your level of embedded humanhood. It depends on your level of embedded carnal mind and your desire to move into the divine states of being. Yeah, so exactly what david said it's it's really just filling your consciousness with truth now when i say truth i mean truth beyond the appearance because we all have our own truth and whatever we believe to be true is going to be our own truth so i don't mean your truth I mean literal truth in consciousness, which is spirit, which is soul, which is infinite, which is eternal, which is God is good. 
and God only created good, so therefore evil cannot exist. And you need to be filling your consciousness with these kind of truths every single day because if you just go out in the world, the appearance of disharmony is going to tell you completely otherwise. And it's going to pit us against each other. And it's going to say, oh, well, the church is evil or religion is evil or, you know, this is coming from the elites or this specific group of people. And when we sit there and we blame something for coming into our experience, we're not, we're still, we're still propagating it as truth in our experience. And we're just, you know, redirecting the blame, we're not seeing the real truth, which is all of these people are also children of God. They're just not quite aware of truth. So they too have adopted this carnal mind and this universal belief in two powers. And there's no easy way about it because David and I are, you know, we still fall into that fear. I've admitted that. I still get completely triggered by things. I still feel like at times I'm very separate from other people and their beliefs. And um, so again, it's something that really starts as an intellectual understanding. And then the more and the more and the more that we fill our tr our consciousness with the truth, then the more that we will be able to overcome this belief in two powers. So again, you need to know the source um, of the error is just some, some idea trying to mentally impose itself from outside of you and you need to reject it because you know the truth and the truth is your identity is one with God. So God constitutes my individual being. God manifests God <laughs> as my life, as my mind, as my spirit, as my soul. Even our bodies are housing and the temple for God. So just remembering this is the spiritual truth about you. And as you start to accept this truth, uh, you'll start to remember that you have dominion over all of these things and nothing can cause you harm and nothing, you know, can do any evil to you because if the truth of your being is God, then the source of you is good and evil cannot exist it has no power yeah okay yeah well said so let's move on here and then we're going to move into a meditation here guys um i'm going to read something for you here and then we're going to go into tonight's meditation okay. and it's really beyond the carnal mind and have a listen to this return to eden if you like same thing who is there who has not had good thoughts and who is there who has not had evil thoughts who is there who has not had pleasant and unpleasant thoughts, healthy and sickly thoughts, pure thoughts and sinful thoughts? That is because thoughts that emanate solely from the mind are always either good or evil. This mental creation is not a creation of spirit or consciousness, but a creation of the false or carnal mind, a mind that is constituted of both good and evil, that thinks correctly and incorrectly, having no consciousness or God for its guide. The entire sense world, made up of that which we see, hear, taste, touch and smell, has no existence whatsoever except as a creation of this carnal mind, which by its very nature and from its very inception is finite, unreal and unstable, with nothing to support it except thoughts, which shift from good to evil and from evil back to good. The very moment that we recognize that the second chapter of Genesis describes mind in action, we had the secret of its destruction. Rise above mind, above thought. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. We do not have the capacity to think God's thoughts, but when the mind is rising above thought, has, has been transcended, and silence supersedes thought, God can utter his word through us. That's very powerful. 
As you know the truth, the truth will free you from all carnal mind conditions, which means all situations or circumstances conditioned by good or evil. Every bit of truth realized will help to set you free from some phase of good or evil until you attain the fullness of the spiritual light in which spirit through the instrument of the unconditioned mind or using God's mind or allowing, sorry, allowing God's mind to move through you expresses itself as your being, body, business, home and relationships. So I love that. It's very, um, very potent. It really speaks to everything we're saying, kind of rounds it off quite nicely. So let's maybe just jump into the meditation tonight. And before we do that, I'm going to layer in some music like this. Thank you for sharing that, honey. Mm. And thank you for all of your comments. I made I made a note. I'm not sure if uh, Crypto Gambler is still in the chat tonight, but he was mentioning something about four paths and uh, which path are you on. So if you're still there and you're still in the chat, can you please comment about what the four paths are exactly? And uh, I would like to look look deeper into that because I'm always curious to learn if I haven't heard of it. All right, guys, so I'm going to learn some music for tonight's meditation hmm. here. Again, we can't hear the music. So can you let me know how my voice sounds? with this music in the background whether it's too loud whether it needs to be louder or whether it's just perfect for you let me know one of those three things would be great and then we're going to jump straight into tonight's meditation so we'll wait for a few comments here and then kelly is going to begin us tonight and then I will finish off in what will be about a 10 minute meditation too quiet I think yes these are shorter meditations we just like to finish our show with them all right good. a couple people said it's good okay well, let's begin. All right, everybody. So just get nice and comfortable where you are. Close your eyes. Sit down, lay down, however you like to meditate. This is for you. Take a couple of deep breaths. Blow it out. Just relax. Hello, family of light. Thank you for joining us tonight to discuss these special topics of conversation and live short meditations. We are so grateful and appreciative for your energy and connection. And those of us here understand how important meditation is in our experience. Recognizing that our true spiritual capacity is developed in meditation and in the silence of going within. It is this inner devotion that develops our spiritual awareness and brings spiritual harmony into our experience. So with your eyes closed, move into the darkness of this withinness and let us go deeper now into our own bodies as we begin to visualize exactly what we are made of. As we know, our very skin, bones, organs, and blood are made up from a bunch of cells 
coming together. And as we go deeper, we can ask ourselves, where exactly do those cells come from? What are they made of? So we start breaking down these cells even further into atoms and then into protons, neutrons, and electrons, which is now over 99% made up of absolutely nothing. Just waveforms of energy which breaks down even further into just a frequency or a vibration where everything in the entire universe is made up of this nothing. However, as new science is emerging And according to modern physics and quantum mechanics, this nothing is way more than just nothing. It is a state of pure potentiality where all possibilities and potentials exist. In this space of nothing, particles pop in and out of existence where they are both energy and matter, depending upon whether an observer is present or not. And the phenomena is that they are everywhere and nowhere at the same time. So let us tap into this nothing as we move deeper into meditation Allow yourself to move into this space as we start to go beyond our thoughts, beyond our bodies, letting ourselves move beyond the concept of time. As our consciousness starts to become like the particles in the quantum void, entering now into a state of infinite potential. This is the entire kingdom of God. It is here and ready to pour itself through into our mind, into our body, into your home, into your business, into your wallet. So therefore, let us make our attitude here and now with our eyes closed, one of receptivity, as if we were inviting God to speak to us, or as if we are inviting the spirit to flow forth through us. The law of God manifests our soul and spirit. So even our bodies are the temple of God, established, maintained, and sustained by that very creator consciousness. In meditation, we must go within and reach a place of absolute conviction that God made all that was made and all that God made is good. Therefore, if we are believing that there is any evil, we are accepting a suggestion external to our own being. We're accepting this suggestion from outside, from the carnal mind, from the universal belief in two powers, a mental imposition from the outside. But our only role is to remember the kingdom of God 
the allness of God is within our very being. And as we sit still and we sit in stillness and in silence, the Spirit of God makes itself manifest in our experience. So let us take a moment and be still. So let us prepare ourselves now to go a level deeper in the final half of tonight's meditation. Let us feel ourselves sinking into a deeper state of relaxation with every breath, going deeper and deeper, allowing your body to relax to a whole new level. leaving your breathing where it is, smooth and steady. Releasing any final little ounces of tension. So let us now prepare ourselves for a new experience, one that is totally safe and secure one that is a step closer to the return of your true being. Very shortly we will rise above the carnal mind for a moment, a few moments. But before we do this, let us anchor ourselves with our light to this wonderful planet, Gaia. So wherever you are now, just imagine, visualize great roots of light growing from the base of your spine, going deep into the earth, anchoring you deeply. Feel the connection to our wonderful planet Feel the stability and support. And also send thoughts of stability and thought to our wonderful Earth in return. As you breathe, feel more centered, feel more secure. And sense with each breath now that you draw up an even deeper level of calmness and peace from the earth. Imagine now that you are ascending above the landscape of your mind, where thoughts scatter like leaves in the wind. As you rise higher and higher, the landscape smooths out into a serene expanse of blue, the sky clear and boundless. In this space there are no labels, no judgments, simply pure being. Allow yourself to float in this vast sky of consciousness now. Thoughts may come and go, like distant birds crossing the sky, but you do not hold on to them. You observe them without attachment, 
letting them pass without influence. In this space there is no good or evil, only the deep, deep resonant silence that exists beyond thought. As you become one with this space now, in this deep quietude, in this deep space of pure consciousness, imagine a gentle warm light beginning to radiate from your heart, filling your entire being with a golden glow. This light represents your connection to the divine the pure consciousness that is you. Feel yourself really now truly becoming a perfect channel for this divine energy, transparent and clear, devoid of any human judgments or duality. As you bask deeper in this divine light, now sense your connection to everything around you. There is no separation between you and the world, between you or anyone else. Everything is interconnected through this divine presence. In this realization now you find the peace that passes all understanding, the deep inner knowing that all is as it should be. So let us take 60 seconds now in quiet meditation to contemplate this connection to everything, to our relationship with the divine. Okay, let us start to venture back now. I know many of you will probably want to stay. That's okay, you can repeat this meditation. We encourage you to do so. Let us come back down from the great heights above the carnal mind. Let us travel back down through the sky, past the clouds and all the birds, back towards wherever you are, in your country, in your state in your city or town or village, back towards your home, wherever you are right now, gently reconnecting with the physical body. Now we'll count us down from five to zero, zero being fully awake and energized like never before. Five, just moving the wrists and ankles, feeling back in the physical. Four, just moving the legs gently. Three, moving the torso from side to side, feeling back anchored in the physical. Two, moving the head from side to side gently. One, just taking a deep breath, fully actualizing back in the physical and zero whenever you're ready come back open eyes fully present oh hello welcome back <laughs> 
Well, we hope you enjoyed that, my friends. We are going to sign off quite quickly here, but we wanted to finish off with a meditation and uh, we wanted to announce something very quickly before we head off. And um, we'll just take sort of a minute or so to do that. But um, let us know how that meditation was for you. If you go we, we always love your comments so much. Um, we're so grateful for you all who have just found us and just bringing your energy together, you know, even where one or more gather, like we have s such a potential to create such an impact just with our energy and where we concentrate and focus our attention. So uh, we, we're really enjoying these live shows and we're going to be logging on in two days on Thursday, the 18th. And we're going to be broadcasting to the GFL station channel. We're going to do a live from the GFL for the first time. Um, we've been doing these broadcasts to the GFL station, but we, as soon as the live is cut off, it disappears off the GFL station and we only keep it on Sunflower Life. So quite similarly we're going to be broadcasting to sunflower life and the gfl station but then we're only going to keep it on the gfl station just because uh there's more of an audience over there and it gets more views but uh it's going to be a big announcement because for the first time ever we mentioned getting to actually give back a little bit more to the community did you want to announce sure so i'm going to share the screen here real quick um, those of you who are not familiar with this initiative, this is the uh, one of many projects we're going to be doing. David launched his new website, the GFL Station. So if you guys are on the mailing list, you might have seen this already. So this is the Lift the Light Worker project. And uh, go and check it out, gflstation.com forward slash lift a light worker. Uh, those of you who are part of the GFL Station community will know all about this. But essentially, this is a project whereby uh, it's a financial project, and this is not the only way to give back, but this is one of the ways we're doing right now. We wanted to involve the community, uh, our online community, our online audience, with the transfer of energy through the transfer of money in this particular instance, again, not the only way, to uh, help star season light workers specifically who are going through difficult financial times. And so a few days ago, we launched the Lift the Light Worker uh, project. And our goal, first goal, was to raise 5,000 US dollars by your donations, by the community donations. We have so many viewers on all of our videos, over 800,000 per month. So we have a lot, almost a million views a month. And we wanted to leverage the power of collective giving. And within like five days, four days, we raised uh, 8,000 US, which was, it blew us away. Um, woo, woo. Now, on this page here... You and can, now what are we going to do with it? Hold on. On this page here... <laughs> We're going to give it away. Hold on. <laughs> on this page here, you can do two things. Um, God, we've already raised 1200 bucks in round two. You, if you are going through uh, difficult times, we're going to do more of a show on this on Thursday, by the way. So we're not going to go through the whole thing now. But if you are going through difficult times now and you consider yourself a light worker, or a star seed, or an old soul, go to the bottom portion of this page and register your name, email address, your country, your phone number, and your story here. Submit that to us, and that will officially register you Register you for a chance to win uh, $5,000. US Now, we've already raised 8000 in the first round, and we've already raised 1200 here in the second round, which is phenomenal. Um, we are in the process now uh, of going through all the entries in round one, let me just stop sharing the screen here. We're in the process of going through all the entries in round one. There's over 90 of you who applied to round one's uh, giveaway, which is phenomenal. I've already been just touched by so many stories. And we're going to decide whether one person or up to five people receive uh, the first payout of $5,000. We're going to be doing it. Um, we're going to be recording it and then showing the video, not live, because there's just too many things that can go, can go wrong with a live. But we are going to be recording it. Um, 
And anyway, in, in Thursday's show, we're going to be outlining more on this. But we're very excited because round one, we've already raised more than enough money to begin giving away enough cash. Um, and round two is already well underway. So if you want to go and donate to that, go to that page. We'll leave a link in the description if you want to be part of the project. We can't do this without you. We already give a whole bunch of our money away every month and we will be giving to this project as well. But we want to do more with this project. So this is the beginning. This is the first initiative. The Lift the Light Worker initiative is going to be many, many more. And we're going to be going through in depth on Thursday what this is going to look like moving forward. But yeah, did you want to say something? Well, yeah. And just of course, there's so many like moving parts after you launch an initiative. And we thought it would probably take a while to raise the money. And then we would get to, you know, figure out how we're going to distribute that and like what we're going to do. But it was just like instantly the money was raised. And now we're like behind. We have to go through all these registrations. We have to figure out exactly like how we're going to give. So that's what Thursday's show is going to be about. But we're just so elated, so excited because this is exactly uh, what we wanted to be doing. And we're just so grateful for such an amazing community. So we should sign off because we're just going to end up saying too much in this true, show true. that we want to do on Thursday. And we're going to go through all of that then. So we hope you join us. Uh, somebody did comment and say that they hope this live keeps playing because they're late to the party. Nadine, I see you. Um, if you're watching from any other channel than the Sunflower Life official, as soon as we cut this off right now, you're going to lose the live feed. But if you go over to our Sunflower Life official channel, uh, this will stay up and it will keep playing and you'll be able to replay it as many times as you like. Um, aside from that, we are going to be going live again on Thursday and we're going to get to talk and give more details about this incredible initiative. And we're just so excited to give back to such a uh, amazing community that is so near and dear to our heart so thank you all absolutely yeah yeah so guys thank you tune in on thursday uh for same place for another live show i'm going to go into depth with this project and many more we've got coming up got some very exciting things coming so thank you all for joining us we love you all we hope you enjoyed the meditation um and that's really all we have for now so have an amazing rest of your week you can reach out to us um, sunflower life dk at gmail.com sunflower life dk david kelly at gmail.com if you want to get in touch with us we try and get back to as many people as we can i know we get a lot of uh, messages we can't get back to everyone but um, if you have got a question do fly us an email and we will pick it up so towards the light we towards go towards the light we go we'll see you guys soon lots of love for now play the outro play the outro